Welcome once again to Noonday Bible Class at uh, Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California, where our pastor is uh, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy, and Sister Marie Dreyer is the one that packs these lessons so you can follow along with uh, the lesson. So we thank you for that service, for her service, for the glory. Lord, we got another good lesson for you today. If you got your Bibles, turn to Colossians 3, 1, 3, and then we'll go through 12, 17. So we'll start off with scripture. Uh, we'll read Psalms 91. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from thy snares of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with uh, his feathers, and under his wings shall uh, thou trust. His truth it shall be thy shield and buckle. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow set by, by, by day nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand should fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation, Thy habitation, there should be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They should bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash thy foot against a stone. Thou should tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon, and shall thou trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. And blessing be to the reading and hearing of Psalms, uh, of Psalms 90. 91, Psalms 91. Okay, we got some prayer requests that we want to put on our prayer request or uh, keep praying for our pastor, Dr. Reverend H. Elite Turner and his family for strength, wisdom, encouragement, and guidance and direction. Uh, pray for CBC staff, Community Baptist Church, ministries, auxiliaries, ministry teachers, and church family. We pray for the George family and the loss of his brother, Don George. We pray for Sister Teresa Newsom and Brother Larry Newsom and family. We pray for Sister Peyton for healing. Uh, we pray for Rosemary and Virgil for healing of her liver, strengthening for her and her family. We pray for Alexis Arch uh, at the loss of her mother, Cindy Baker. We pray for Pastor Rod Bowman and granddaughter Dominic for healing. We pray for Alfonso Rogers and the loss of his brother Chris. We pray for uh, Sister Patrick Jones. Uh, we pray for Brother Greg Major. Uh, we pray for Sister Natalie for salvation. We pray for Alana. Joy for healing and comfort. We pray for Alan Snyder and salvation. We pray for Johnny, uh, Brother Johnny Terrell and healing. And pray for my sister Dolores Miller and her family. And uh, Lord, we pray for all those watching today, Lord, that you know their needs and wants. We pray that you would answer a prayer according to your will. Uh, word of prayer, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you for this time we're going to spend in your word, Lord. We ask that the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts. We ask forgiveness of all sin we committed against thee, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just wash us through your blood, Lord. 
And uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask for cleansing power from all sin. We ask that the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts, minds, souls today, Lord, as we study this lesson. And Lord, I just uh, pray for all those out there watching, Lord, that we will bless them in a mighty way with this message today, Lord. And also for any healing they want and uh, for a prayer request that, that they uh, that's on their minds, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being our God and watching over us uh, every day, Lord. We give you the praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for this day. And Lord, we got a great message for you today. So if you got your Bibles, turn to Colossians 3, 1 to 3, or 12 to 17. And also the scripture is in this lesson too, so you can have it there. Uh, so the point is how, okay, uh, session four, living the message. And it says, question one, which companies do you appreciate for a genuine living out of their values? And they have Chick-fil-A, which is a Christian uh, um, in charge of that company. Um, how do we live reflects the message we share. Uh, the passage is Colossians 3, 1, 3, 12 and 15. The Bible meets life. Most businesses in America are known simply for what they sell. We don't often give thought to the value and ethics behind those goods and service. It's rare but refreshing when we hear of business that are as well known for their value as for what they sell. One of the most well-known co uh, corporations with strong values and practice is Hobby Lobby. The CEO, CEO of Hobby Lobby, David Green, is unashamed of his faith. He has built a Christian culture in which he leads others to uh, lean on God in prayer, who depends on the Bible to guide his business direction. Amen. But this is not merely a face he puts on for the public. He sees management as a servant of the employees, and he seeks to live uh, that out with his employees. Employees are paid well above the minimum wage. Stores close early enough to allow parents to tuck their kids in bed. Employees have Sunday off. Our lives must match what we uh, say in public. As we tell others about Jesus, it is equally important that they see Jesus in us. Amen. Okay. How we, uh, the point is how we live reflects the message we share in Colossians 1, 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and on things on the earth, not on things of the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Key word, the right hand of God. Verse one, a position of power and privilege, emphasizing the rule of Christ over all creation. The phase would have been associated with the deity of Christ outlined in chapter one, two. It's easy to get caught up in the things of this world or culture, or culture influence everything from clothing and lifestyle to the definition and value of relationships. Long-term commitment to anything, jobs, relationship, responsibility, and even home is on the decline. Culture now experiences a consistent influx of change. Technology adds another dynamic to our ever-changing world. Our cell phones and field outdated within the first six months of purchasing uh, because the next best thing has already come along. With uh, so much change in our world, it is not wise to try to constantly keep up with the trend. What in today can be out tomorrow and we find ourselves wanting to catch up again. People who pursue life with uh, their focus never find fulfillment. Driven by a need for something new, something different, or something better satisfied and fleeting. 
Fortunately, fortunately, Jesus Christ is like the world. Jesus isn't like the world. He never changes, thank God. But uh, he never, he's never outdated, amen. He is the one perfect constant we can always turn to, amen. Paul wrote of the, the confidence we find in Jesus and warned us against seeking the thing of this world. As we identify with Christ, we let go of the world's priority and allow him excess and authority over our lives. By doing so, we demonstrate to others that we are under his authority. Modeling and authenticating Christian life may not be easy at times, and others may criticize our beliefs, practice, and morality. They may see our values and uh, 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 culturally antiquated and irrelevant where that far from true but that's far from the truth. When we make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are identifying with his priesthood and character. We are joined with him in death, dying to our old life, and our new resurrection life in Christ is revealed, displaying a new way of walking and trusting that glorifies him. Instead of allowing our worldly sinful nature to run things, we can live humble, Christ-like lives in submission to God the Father. Uh, share Jesus without fear, Paul Gray's testimony. Before becoming to Christ, Bill Gray was a successful businesswoman, businessman, who became connected with the mafia and stated uh, a house of prostitution at this time in his life. Bill started having encounters with Christians so, who shared their faith and talked about inner peace. Through a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is Bill's story. For the next year, Christians came into his life to tell me about the person of Jesus Christ. When they did, they were insolvent, prosecuted, and antagonized, anti-agonized. Many of them walked away, believing they failed, but I never forgot the name and face, the words, or any one of them who told me about the Lord Jesus. Amen. My husband is known for a gentle giant with his six foot, four inch, 300 plus pound statue. I always felt protected and safe whenever I'm with him because his presence can literally cover me. Next to my five foot or six inch statue, he looms even larger. During a speaking event, I spoke about how he, uh, how we are covered and identified in Christ. I asked my husband to stand directly in front of me between me and the audience. Though the people could hear me speaking, all they saw was him, Paul wrote. Your life is hid with Christ and God. Our identity with Christ means that when people look at us, they should see Jesus, amen? Having a Christ-like character requires dying to self and submitting to the authority of Lordship to Jesus. To identify ourselves as followers of Jesus without exemplifying his character leads others to view us in hypocritical, inauthorizing, and upright faith. If we not uh, if we're not different from the world, they see no need to follow Jesus. We are called to be real, a real deal, living in authentic relationship to Him and reflecting Him to the world. What are some uh, What are some challenges uh, we face in trying to live authentic Christian life? Uh, well, you know, we want to, uh, it's how you, uh, like you uh, close yourself uh, in the next page, it says, close ourselves instead with the bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. When we dress this way, the presence of Christ prevail on us. So in other words, we're going to have to be, uh, 
example, we're going to have the show Christ in us by our, our relationship and with others, and uh, that they will see Christ in us, Lord, and that and all these uh, uh, mercies, kindness, and humbleness, and meekness, and long suffering. These are human relations. These are uh, relations we have with other people. So uh, we're going to have to make sure we live up to them. Colossians 3, 12 to 15, put on therefore the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humble and meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also must do ye. And above all these things, put on charity or love, which is a bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you called in one body and be thankful. So those right there, those uh, 12 to 15, are also things we uh, do to do uh, in uh, the Christian life. What exactly is involved in maintaining a good character? Paul identifies several godly traits we are to put on. And where, as God chosen one, loved and set apart for his glory, we are to display the same traits and behavior that Jesus himself did. For the world to see Jesus reflect through us, we must be willing to close ourselves with him. When trying to decide what to wear for the day, I regularly check the weather forecast. Weather conditions can vary greatly in the Pacific Northwest, but the clothes of a godly character we are to put on uh, are always appropriate regardless of spiritual climate around us. We should set aside the old clothes of angry, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthiness, communication. Colossians 3 8, and when we put on the old man, verse 9, we close our stealth instead of the bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, meekness, uh, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. When we dress this way, the presence of Christ prevails in us. Amen. Paul provides special instruction on dealing with conflicts by forbearing one another through patience and long suffering. We also need forgiveness to help us avoid the danger of unforgiving heart. As we acknowledge our own need for forgiveness from Christ, it's easier to forgive others who have harmed or offended us. Uh, and it says, engage, choose one of the following image that best represents being clothed in Christ. And then that's uh, one is praying, one is loving others, one is sharing knowledge, and one is listening to uh, these images we collect by clothing. And God decides is for us to be one with him and with each other, and nothing brings us together in unity like love. In his love, God provides his peace and rules and reigns as we trust covering ourselves in God's love protect us and it draws others to Christ and that they see in us. By this, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one another. And that's in John 13, 35. Finally, we can maintain a godly character by being thankful for all that God has done for us. We should seek every opportunity to put Jesus on display consistently displaying God's character, enables him to be at the forefront of our lives. And this ensures that people will encounter him through us. Without a consistent mind sense of Christ first, it is easy to conform to the pattern of this world instead of being transformed by him. Donning a wardrobe of godly character ensures others we see, hear, and feel the presence of Jesus when they see us. We dress for kingdom success when we wear the character of Christ. What are some practical steps believers can put on the character of Christ? It says uh, in the next uh, set of scripture, it tells us, let us let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom 
teaching and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in words or deeds, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So that's what you can do, practical step. The best way to learn about more about God is through his word. And the believer's life is more common, most common way people encounter Jesus. When believers allow the word of God to take up residence and dwell in them, we can we can't help but reveal Christ. This is one of the reasons Paul encouraged believers to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. To dwell means to abide for a time. The word of God needs to dwell in us to transform us from, from nature, worldly people to spiritual-led believers who honor Christ. Paul admonish us to let the word dwell in us richly. In abundance, it permeates every aspect of our being. The word of God needs to consume our lives, pushing aside anything that does ref not, uh, doesn't reflect the glory of God. As we allow the word to take up residence within us, the result is a flood of godly wisdom that overflows to others in a variety of ways. The rich truth of God's word can be taught and encouraged through various forms of music. When the term has some overlaps between their meanings, Paul identifies these songs, the sacred poems and songs from the Old Testament book of Psalms, hymns, festival songs of praise, songs that tell of our faith in God faithfully, spiritual songs, a variety of musical compositions. Uh, we are to sing all forms of music and songs to the Lord with a heart of thanksgiving, thank, thankfulness. We should maintain an attitude of gratitude, looking at life from the position of all we have instead of what we don't have. To possess a heart of gratitude is to view life from the perspective and the contentment instead of this dissatisfaction. Uh, How has music helped shape your kingdom and understand, understanding of God? No matter what we do, we are to express thanks to God to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, well, question four was, how has music helped shape your knowledge and understanding of God? Through the Psalms and, and, and that right there. Um, and uh, no matter what we do, we express thanks to God do all in the name of the Lord, uh, Lord Jesus. In other words, every word and every action are to be done with the conscious righteousness of, of Christ's leadership, authority, and reputation. He is Lord over all uh, He is Lord over all we do, and we offer him thanks for all he does. Christ has given us the privilege of upholding his reputation and making him known. I hope you see how important it is to demonstrate our faith others through our character and our action. A verbal witness of God's love and salvation is backed up by the life we lead. People may want to debate theological and religion, but they can't argue with it life-centered in a transformed by Christ. Their lives we lead, uh, the lives we lead in Christ speaks for them. They said, what role does our group play in helping others to grow in Christ's life? Then live it out. How will you ensure your actions align with the message you share? Confess. Are these, uh, are there any areas of your life that don't align with the message of Christ? Pray and ask God to reveal any sin or habits. Confess those and repent. Accept correction. Give a trusted friend permission to point out times when you are thinking more like the world and not like Christ. Share, as God gives you an opportunity to share your faith, be willing to admit your own sins and failures. And it's important to be transparent, but uh, keep the focus on Christ who has forgiven and transformed you. So always bring Christ in there. You can tell him your testimony, but it's what Christ did for you that really counts, and that's important when you're late.
message. Okay, our lesson uh, session five will be shared a message. If you want to study on that, there's uh, Acts 17, 16 through 18, 22 through 23, and 30 through uh, 31. That will be next week's lesson. Well, we thank you for this lesson. Go over it a couple more times during the week just to keep it refreshed in your mind. And uh, also share it with others uh, that they might get the benefits of this lesson. We thank you once again for joining us. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory, Lord. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you for this great lesson, Lord. And we thank you for the lesson coming up that we can share the message of Jesus Christ. But also walk the talk, and not just uh, uh, the example of Christ to others and to our actions and deeds, Lord. We thank you that your word, as we study your word, that we ask the Holy Spirit to minister to our hearts, that we may also to apply it to our lives, Lord, that we can be a witness for you as ambassadors in Christ, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and the honor to be in uh, your disciple, Lord, and we thank you for all those who are watching, Lord, that you would just bless them in a certain in a mighty way, Lord. And all their prayer needs, Lord, we lift up to you, Lord, Ask that you will be done in their lives, Lord, and that they will have the strength to follow uh, what you have for them to do this day. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Well, we ask a special blessing on you during this day and uh, during the week, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day, and God bless.